Meta has just dropped perception encoder. This is one part of the family of perception language model which Meta has released few days back. We covered that perception LM in another video and I would highly encourage you to watch that video because this whole knits together and I am going to explain what is the relationship of this perception LM with this new perception encoder plus we are also going to install it locally and we will play around with it in a Google Colab. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. First up, let's try to understand what exactly is this perception encoder and how this fits into the bigger picture of these perception models. The perception encoder is a state-of-the-art vision backbone designed for both image and video understanding built through large-scale contrastive vision language pre-training. I know this is mouthful, but don't worry, I'm going to unpack it in simple words. The thing is that unlike traditional vision encoders, which often rely on multiple task-specific pre-training strategies, like image classification, captioning or spatial localization, this PE or perception encoder uses a unified clip or contrastive vision language objective. This approach means that it learns general visual embeddings or numerical representation by aligning image and video with text descriptions. That is all there is to it. Through extensive scaling of data and careful training pipelines, this perception encoder achieves strong, transferable features across a broad spectrum of vision tasks, including classification, retrieval, VQA or visual question answering, and dense prediction tasks like detection and segmentation. But these rich representations are dispersed throughout various layers of the model and require specialized alignment methods to be fully utilized for all downstream applications. Now, as I was referring to that there is something called as perception LM, which we already have covered. The relationship between perception encoder and perception LM or PLM is foundational one. Encoder provides a vision encoding backbone within PLM architecture, while PLM builds an entirely open and reproducible framework for vision language modeling, where it combines the PE vision encoder with a smaller efficient LLM decoder. It also deliberately avoids depending on proprietary teacher model, in contrast to much of the uh, prevalent norm in the field. And there are a lot of other uh, things which is happening in this model which i will be describing later on when i also walk you through this architecture but for now let me take you to my google colab and then we are going to uh, first download this perception encoder model and there are various of them i'm just going to go with this zero shot image classification and this is the one which I'm going to use. So let's go to free Google Colab. From the runtime, I'm just going to change the runtime to T4 GPU. You can easily run it on CPU. There is no problem there. Okay, first let's prepare the environment and I'm going to give you the link to this notebook too. So we are just cloning the repo of perception models and then we are checking if CPU is there or not. So let's wait for it. It is going to clone it and then it is going to put it in the local uh, directory here on our Google Colab. And if you don't know what Google Colab is, it's a hosted environment from Google, which you can access at colab.google.com. Just log in with your free Gmail account and you should be good to go. It's almost there. Okay, so that is done. In the next step, let's download our model. So I'm just going to give it this command, which is going to download this model. You can download any other model, just replace the name from here. But let's go with this model. And this is going to download it from Hugging Face. And the model is being downloaded. It is in the PyTorch format, as you can see, not that safe tensor. Uh, which should be the case but anyway let's wait for it and while it downloads let's talk a bit more about this architecture because i think this is the most important part in this model so if you look here 
the architecture of this perception encoder um, tells us that there is something called as PE core that is first trained on vast amount of image and video data using a large scale contrastive pre-training objective. This core encoder supports standard classification and retrieval tasks out of the box for both images and videos, but to fully exploit its hidden task-specific intermediate features, Perception Encoder undergoes a process called as alignment tuning, which bifurcates the model into two specialized heads. PE language, which is optimized for language modeling tasks such as OCR, Q&A, captioning and grounding, and PE spatial, which is specialized for specially dense tasks like object detection, segmentation, tracking, and depth estimation. The alignment tuning process selectively extracts and adapts features from the most relevant layers of the PE core that produces state-of-the-art performance across both multimodal language and spatial tasks. So this is what is happening in this whole architecture, which is simple yet quite powerful. Okay, so it seems that this um, close to 10 GPU of model is not fitting onto the free Google GPU. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move to a bigger GPU. First, I thought I will just uh, edit this, but I wanted to show you that we are all um, same in the in the same board and we all go through the same struggle of vram constraints but anyway um i would just move on to the bigger gpu and try it again unfortunately that won't be a free one i was hoping it would fit into a free one but anyway so let me move there so i have moved on to my jupyter notebook with a larger gpu with 48 gpu of vram hopefully that should be enough for it so we will also check it out the vram consumption once the model is downloaded and the model is downloaded you can ignore these warnings uh these are not warnings i think we are good there so next up i'm just getting an image of cat and then there are few text captions and we are generating the encodings for that image and then we are going to print it out it is going to show it with the probability so let's run it and as soon as i have run it it is finished so this is the image of cat and you see these were the caption diagram dog and cat and look at the probabilities one is for the cat and then it has detected it very correctly that time it is about a cat let's also check vram consumption <laughs> for an encoder model it is consuming quite a lot of uh, vram over 10 gig of vram but i think the quality is quite good and the speed the latency is very i think totally negligible Okay, so that is good then. I was hoping you could run it on the CPU. I was thinking it at the start of the video, so I take it back. I don't think so this would work on CPU. And next I have given it the pass to my local image of a bear and then I am just giving it a few captions and you see it has displayed it and the probability is one for the bear, the middle one. Pretty cool. Let's try out one more. Next up, I'm giving it an image of an enemy. So let's see, this is the enemy. And then these are the captions. There you go, perfectly awesome. Okay, let's do one more final one. In this one, I'm asking it that I have given it this image. This is the image, which is an AI generated rendition of that famous movie, of course. But you see, so I've said it pulp fiction a girl a cat so it has very correctly identified that it is related to pulp fiction so probability is one for pulp but it could also go with for the girl but i think it is more closely related to this one so that is why it is gone with this one so the quality of the model this encoder model is really exceptional so that's it let me know what do you think if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you are already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thank you for watching